What an exciting time we are living in here in North Dakota. The Bakken Formation. This is a world-class oil field right here in North Dakota, Montana, and Saskatchewan. There's three things that go into the Bakken Formation to make it work. One is great geology. The second is horizontal drilling. And the third is fracture stimulation. We can do that safely and effectively. The easiest way to see where the Bakken is is to look at the rig locator map. This is from the North Dakota Industrial Commission. And each one of those little green marks are, is a drilling rig. This is the current map that is going on in North Dakota. And as you can see, it's the western part of the state. Why in the west? Because this is a depositional environment. The Bakken Formation dips down in the western part of the state with the deepest part of the basin in the McKenzie County area. So around by Watford City, down in that area, the true vertical depth of the Bakken Formation is about 11,000 feet of TVD. Generally speaking, in the areas that we drill, the Bakken is about 10,000 feet. I'm going to refer to two different depths. True vertical depth is a straight down depth. Measured depth is the depth that you take from the surface, following the bit, through the curve, and out the lateral horizontally. We drill these wells about 10,000 feet down, 10,000 feet sideways, which makes for about a 20,000 foot well that is geosteered from computers and a drilling rig located at the surface. Back in 2008, the US Geological Survey came out with the um, study with the assessment units of the Bakken Formation. And what this did was it delineated the area that the Bakken is productive in. There's different zones and there's different expulsion units. It's important because this put Bakken and North Dakota on the map. This is really what made the headlines. And I remember the newspaper in Tioga, where I'm from, and Tioga, the newspaper headline said four billion barrels. That referred to four billion barrels of recoverable crude oil out of the Bakken formation with current technology. Okay, fast forward to 2012, our technology continues to evolve, it gets better, and we're doing a better job. We're doing a better job of getting this crude oil out of the Bakken formation. Let's look at the stratigraphic column in North Dakota. This is a picture that represents the different rock units as you go down. As you can see where the red arrows point, the Bakken Formation, the Three Forks Formation, those are about 10,000 to 11,000 feet of TVD, true vertical depth that we talked about. About 360 million years ago, these rocks were being deposited. So that is the age of the Bakken Formation. Look up at the top of that chart, and the yellow zone is up in the area where our water aquifers are. And it's very important as the, as the country, as the world, talks about fracture stimulation and how safe or not they think it is, I want to explain a little bit of just how the dynamics of our Bakken works. And it's very important to understand this, because then we all come to this from an informed view. And that yellow zone and the next kind of uh, rust-colored zone coming down from the top refers to the, um, the different time periods. Um, the quaternary is the top, the tertiary is the next, and into that green unit are Cretaceous time zones, are Cretaceous rock units out of that period. And we drill that part of the well bore with fresh water. We drill down into the Cretaceous shales, the, top, the formation's called the pier shale, and we stop drilling, take all the drill pipe out of the hole, and at that point, a surface casing is set. Now this surface casing is 9 and 5 8 inch casing, it is then cemented in, and the cement is circulated back up the back side of the well bore. And that is referred to the annulus. So the cement goes in place, and the North Dakota Industrial Commission verifies that that cement goes all the way to the surface and securely isolates the surface aquifers from the well bore. It is then pressure tested and checked again for security. At that point, your surface water system is secure and kept away from the wellbore. We resume drilling, and we drill down our vertical 
to kick off point, pick up a mud motor, drill the curve, land in the Bakken formation, and set an intermediate casing string. Now that casing string is seven inches in diameter, all the way back up to surface, and that casing is cemented in place. You now have a barrier from your surface aquifers, you have the cement in the wellbore, you have the nine and five eighths inch surface casing, and you have the seven inch intermediate casing. Three levels of protection between our water zones and the wellbore. Then we go on to drilling our, our middle Bakken. The stratigraphy of this formation is overlain by the lodgepole formation. Lodgepole is a massive limestone. It's about six to 700 feet thick. We drilled down through this, building our curve to land into the Bakken formation. Now the Bakken is made up of the upper Bakken shale, the middle Bakken, lower Bakken, and what is newly named the pronghorn formation. So as we, over the, the past couple of years, have been referring to the lower zone as the Sanish, it is now evolving and we're learning more about this zone and we're finding out that the zone immediately below the second shale is actually a sandstone dolomite shale sequence that is more closely associated with deposition from the Bakken formation. So the um, North Dakota Geological Survey is now including this pronghorn into the Bakken formation. What we are targeting horizontally is that middle Bakken and the pronghorn. Bakken shale. I have a piece of core right here. It looks very similar to the picture that we're looking at. This is Bakken core. Hard shale. This is the source rock. This is the rock that generates the oil. And you're going to look at it and you're going to say, crazy, you can't possibly get any oil out of that. Well, I'm going to tell you we do. And the way we do it is horizontal drilling and fracture stimulation. Those two things together are what make this Bakken play work. Here's the source rock. This is the rock that generates the oil. Here's a piece of middle Bakken. Once again, you're going to look at this core, this, these pictures that I have here, and you're going to say there's no way you're going to get oil out of that rock. This rock right here has very few holes in it. They're very small holes, low porosity. The holes that are in it have low permeability. That means that they are not well connected together. So the two things, low porosity, low permeability, is the definition of an unconventional reservoir. That is what the Bakken is. So when we read about unconventional reservoirs, here is a perfect example of it. The next zone down is a second layer of black shale, followed by the pronghorn. Pronghorn is similar, and it's a, a series of formations and layers. We call them lithophases, that are shales, uh, sandstones, siltstones, limestones, dolomites. And we have a preferred zone that we like to drill in within the middle Bakken, and a preferred zone within the pronghorn formation. So we are doing, targeting these zones, and geologists help the oil companies geosteer and target and stay in these zones. Now, how do we do that? I said one of the components was horizontal drilling. We start out with our wellbore course drilling vertically, and I'm going to use a little straw to, to show this. Drill down vertically to kickoff point. At that point, all the drill pipe, bit, everything comes out of the hole, and we pick up a mud motor. A mud motor, similar to my little straw here, has a bend to it. The key part is the bent housing. That allows us to deviate away, away from vertical drilling. At the end of this assembly, this is the drill pipe that goes all the way up to the drilling rig. At the end of this is the drill bit. And within the mud motor, is, an, is a rotor stator assembly. What that is, for those of us who are farmers, it's similar to a grain auger, that as you pump fluid, the drilling mud, down the center of the pipe, through the rotor and stator assembly, it transmits torque to the bit. 
So when we decide, an oil company decides that they want to drill east, the directional driller will orient his assembly to the east, and he will pump down through the assembly, turning the bit and pushing the pipe. And this is the way we followed the azimuth, or the direction, that the oil company wants the well to drill. All of these measurements are surveys taken within this tool and sent back up to the surface via the MUD system. They are sent up in a binary system, decoded by a transducer, through a computer system, and given to the MWD hand, who is the measure while drilling. So the different guys, geologist, directional driller, MWD hand. All these crews are out on the drill site, living there, and working for the oil company. So these are the components that get us to the horizontal drilling. Now, the other, other part of this puzzle was fracture stimulation. We now have our wellbore drilled out 10,000 feet sideways. Think about this. This is a six inch bit that is being geosteered by computers, geologists, directional drillers, and it is going out tracking a formation that is going up and down, waving just like the surface of the land does, and we are tracking those, those lithophases, steering a six inch bit that is 20,000 feet away from us. It's just incredible. Now that is where the technology, when we talk about this and we say that we are getting better at it, this is a technological play. Over the years, people have asked me, how did you miss this? How did you miss this, Bakken? If you've been drilling down through it all these years, how did we miss it? We didn't miss it. We had tremendous shows in the Bakken as we drilled it vertically. But it wasn't until the technology caught up that we were able to make these wells productive. And that's what we're doing now. We got really picked up with the drilling in North Dakota Bakken in 2008. Fast forward 2012, as I said, and we are doing things better than we did four years ago. And I am certain that we will be doing things better another four years from now. Fracture stimulation. It is a complicated process. <laughs> that right there is a wellhead connected to the pipes, the chicksons, the lines that pump the fluid down the drill pipe into the formation. Fracture stimulation is hydraulically cracking the rock apart. Remember, this is our rock. This has oil in it. This is the reservoir of the, of the Bakken formation. We are going to hydraulically crack that rock apart with, fracturing the, with, with hydraulic fracturing. So the mixture is almost all water, some chemicals similar to antifreeze, bicarbonate, different household chemicals in that water. About 3% of the solution is chemical. We have propant in there, which is either a sand or a ceramic bead. And the propant is the material that stays out in the cracks that holds the rock open after the fracking is completed. So when we are fracking these wells, the pump trucks are pumping the hydraulic the water and the slurry out into the formation and cracking this rock open. They turn the pumps off, the well starts to come back, the frack fluid flows back to the surface, propping stays out there and keeps these little tiny cracks open, and what follows behind is the oil. You now have a flowing or pumping oil well. Technology continues to, to evolve. This, this picture right here is a picture of six well bores on one pad. This is an eco pad. The oil field is getting very, very efficient in how they are drilling these wells. What happened on this particular location, the rig that drilled this is a walking rig. Now normally, rigs are kind of like tinker toys. Bring them out there, assemble them, drill your well, disassemble them, and move them on. Well, now what we're evolving into is we're talking in, going into walking rigs. This rig, with all assembled and the pipe, all the drill pipe standing up in the derrick, is able to move, slide, skid 40, 50 feet away and start drilling another well. 
it will do it again and drill another well. And this particular location, they drilled six well bores off of one pad. As you can see from that, that's a very effective way to drill these wells, save time, save money, and be environmentally friendly. The pads, are, the pads are less disruptive to the environment than having six well sites out there. One road to get in there, not six. This oil field is pretty special. And I think that North Dakota and the Bakken are safely and securing, in securing our American energy independence. Thank you.